with that atrocious performance in the in the bag and uh probably the most embarrassing one of the most i don't know one of the i'd say one of the most embarrassing losses in giants history coming off the most embarrassing loss of my lifetime <laughs> in uh week 1 it's uh apparent that even though Dave's was like we're not going to make any changes they went out and signed uh Justin Pugh former giant Justin Pugh they signed him to the practice squad he uh has moved he moved from tackle to guard he can play tackle but he's listed as a guard 65311 He's now 33 years old, went to Syracuse, uh, Council Rock South High School, which is where I think one of the Council Rocks is where I wanted Bree to go to high school back when, when I was part of a family. Uh, f- first round draft pick in 2013, 19th overall. So it's it's tough because like we know that the Giants have not had a good offensive line in damn near 15 seasons. We had probably the best offensive line in 2008 where we had two different backs run for a thousand yards. We totaled 2000 plus yards rushing total for the season. And then 2009, we still had an all pro and a uh, pro bowler. And then I think 2010, 20, 2009, 2010 was when it started to fall apart and our offensive line suffered. Justin Pugh is a first rounder. Eric Flowers is a first rounder. Andrew Thomas is a first rounder. Evan Neal is a first rounder. So it's like, there were a couple of drafts where we did ignore the offensive line or we didn't take top offensive line talent, which was a mistake. But when you misfire on a bunch of top draft picks like that, it kills your franchise because they end up going out in free agency and overspending on some free agent to make up for your poor draft. And that's been the case. Jerry Reese put us in a fucking hole. You cannot convince me otherwise. It started with Jerry Reese having poor draft after poor draft after poor draft. We all hailed him for the 2007 draft when all those rookies contributed to the Super Bowl, improbable Super Bowl. A lot of those guys didn't last. And a lot of the guys he ended up drafting in 2008, 2009, 2010, you know, it's like maybe we'd be lucky if we had one guy that really was a, a like all pro, all uh, pro bowler or just an overall good to great player that gets a second contract, you know? JPP, Odell, <sighs> Hakeem Nix. But a lot of these guys, they would get hurt and they wouldn't see a second contract or they were traded. So, I mean, that was the case for a very long time. I mean, uh, you know, we talked about it. Dexter Lawrence, Daniel Jones, potentially Saquon Barkley. Um... Is there another guy? It's very rare that we now are starting to sign Andrew Thomas, that we're extending and signing guys that we drafted to a second contract. It just didn't happen for like a solid decade plus. And we try to cover it up by bringing in guys like Jack Rabbit and Olivier Vernon and Snacks and Blake Martinez and Bradbury and uh, Logan Ryan. And, it, you know, and it kind of works for the first season and then it just falls apart and then it, it, we ended up having we haven't having to sell so that's where that's where we're at it's not like we didn't draft offensive linemen early or often it's just maybe it's a, it, it, that's the debate right now is it just they we our scouts were completely wrong about this shit or um or is it the coaching is it the coaching is it the scouts it's one of the two or both the scouts completely like got it wrong and then the coaches couldn't coach them up. It's probably a combination of the two, to be honest. So, I mean, the Maras and the Tishes had to be like, oh my God, not again. And it's hard to see what the future must look like for Brian Dable and Joe Shane. You know, how quickly the tides turned. I mean, you know, we talked about Ben McAdoo, uh, you know, first year going to the playoffs, second year fired. Uh, Buck Showalter, first year with the Mets, manager of the year, one losing season, fired. Um, so it's like, Joe Shane, you've now had two drafts, 2022, 2023. I thought 2023 was going to be one of the better drafts so far. Deontay Banks playing pretty well as a starter first year. John Michael Schmitz was, I don't know. I mean, I guess he was playing okay. The best of the line, which is not saying much with Andrew Thomas hurt. And then uh, Hyatt, like just not getting the ball, you know, getting increased snaps, which was what we're all calling for. And then just not getting the ball because Daniel Jones just doesn't look his way or doesn't trust him yet. I don't know. <sighs> but Justin Pugh, his best years of the G-Men were 2014, 2015. 
uh, best years of his career actually came with the Cardinals from 2019 to 2021. And then he only played five games in 2022 before tearing his ACL. He has only played two full seasons in his career. So I guess he has to get back in football shape. Not sure how long that'll take, but I would guess if he shows something, anything that then then they'll they'll be, uh, they might have to be forced to, to bring him up and call him up and just be like, just do better than Shane Lemieux and Glowinski. Can you do that? It's not asking a lot. (laughs) So great, I guess. I mean, Landon Collins uh, had a homecoming, got a pick six. And then I don't know. I don't know what Landon Collins is doing now. Is he on the team? Is he back with the commanders? No, right? No, not playing. All right. Uh,